Hi, everyone. My name is Ilya Marochnik, and on behalf of myself and New Masters Academy, I'm here to liven up your day in this time of crisis. Like me, I'm sure you're all stuck inside, concerned for your family, your friends, your loved ones. But to help you continue to live your lives, to continue to hone your craft, New Masters Academy is offering some great opportunities. For one, the beginning drawing class is available for free on NMA.art. And secondly, free critiques are now being offered to work submitted to the Open Critique, Open Critique Forum. See the link in the description and keep in mind that you do not need to be a paying subscriber to make an account and be a part of the New Masters Academy community. Whoever you are, wherever you are, you can take a piece you're working on, a piece you have worked on in the past, but would like to get some, uh, someone else's eyes on it, uh, upload it, and there's a great chance that either myself or one of the, one of the um, other incredible New Masters Academy artists and instructors are going to do an online critique of it and, uh, and one which everyone will be able to uh, to be a part of and see and learn from. That being said, I've already picked a few pieces for now, and I'm going to do a critique of them. Uh, so let's get that started. Okay, so I'm going to begin these critiques with this portrait submitted by Kenneth McGarrity. Reminiscent, uh, of course, and initially what kind of brought it to my attention was the fact that it reminds me so much of, of Nikolai Fashion's uh, portraits um, when uh, from the time he lived in New Mexico. And there's definitely the definitely the sort of paint handling quality, the way the face is being modeled that I can, I don't want to really make too much, too much of an assumption, but I do believe that that is, uh, that clearly was in the mind of the of Kenneth McGarrity. Uh, so here's what I think needed to happen. So the one thing that's happening, and it, it sort of seems, uh, I'll, I'll mark some things up here. The one thing that's happening is this line and this little area of canvas, which is clearly uh, a lighter value and looks like uh, maybe a wash went over it. And you can see that same wash up here. Now, what it looks like and it doesn't really mean that it is. But what it looks like is that the whole canvas was more or less tinted with sort of some transparent orangey, purple, red colors. Um, then some of these blues were applied in a more sort of abstract pattern. Um, and then on top of that, a face, a face was painted. Now, what's a face and hair and the neck and everything? So, What's wrong with this? There's, in a sense, there isn't anything. Like, I like this because it prepares the ground for the painting in a way that's quite interesting, quite exciting. Um, this is painting after all, so let's go to painting and my favorite sort of wet acrylic is a cool one. Uh, but maybe even the one I like, oriental brush is good. I do like gouache a lot. As well, there's a lot of them here. That there is, right? So you can you can go with that. So that is what we can. Awesome. So so now we have what we need. So the idea is, right? You have this uh this this abstract background, and then the foreground is placed on top of that. The only thing that needs to happen, though, is there needs to be some stronger cohesion between the foreground and the background, right? So it can't really be, it can't really remain the way that it's done here, where you can almost clearly see this edge, right? This edge of where the sort of foreground, the portrait, is laid on top of the background. Everything is cut. It doesn't exist within that context of the the sort of the the intersection of foreground and background, the intersection of pigment and color. In some ways, you almost must think of the background 
as something that is being placed on top of the foreground to make the foreground as precise as possible. So for example, if I were to take the, the hair, right? Here's how I would approach it. Possibly, uh, maybe let's take a uh, painting, I don't know, so something to be a little bit more opaque. Um, I would simply move this out to here, right? Whichever colors, color pick, move them out, right? And then mix up this background color and carve in the hair from the back. Now, obviously, on Procreate, I don't have the opacity that oil paint will uh, allow me to have, but, uh, oh boy, sorry about that. So, but that's the idea. See, so there's this, in a sense, in, in, in real life, in oil painting, you would be able to see this distinction quite clearly, right? You'd be able to really see um, this um, interaction between the foreground and the background, and as if the background is telling you what the foreground should be, not the other way around, right? This creates a tighter structure of the of the painting, a tighter sort of uh, paint matrix, if you will, and that's a very important thing. So that's just something something to mention. Second thing, go back to my uh, to my. Uh, other paint brushes here. The other thing is, possibly, like, I just don't think that that color and this color need to be identical. And I think we can start by just blocking everything in blue here, or continuing this very interesting uh, sort of variation in temperature changes, right? Maybe we can move this along, we can have um, different colors there, but then, of course, we will run into the next problem, which is that everything down here is the same as everything up there uh, in terms of value and color. So I just moved this blue that was here. So let's say we keep it, but look at this blue up here, right? It's almost, it's, it's, it's kind of in the, it's kind of a grayish, a grayish tint to it. Um, so what if we simply Oh boy, look at that. That's weird. Interesting, interesting. Let's see what we can do with this. What if we just minimize some of this stuff in the background, right? Simplify. Simplify it. Allow the hair to connect with it in some places, right? And already, we're looking a little bit more at the head. Now, has it killed some of those wonderful, strong, um, strong pinks and bright oranges? Yeah, perhaps. But then we can reintroduce them, right? We can introduce them. We can pick something from there. We can we can find ways to place them. We can soften them. We can move things around, right? So, in general, I'm just trying to get some of this um, out of the way, right? Now, what is another option? Another option. Maybe it's to simplify the whole thing, right? Maybe the other option is to just convert the background into using some more of those pinks and other colors with very small hints of, of the blue. Maybe there's no blue, almost, right? Maybe that's all we got. Maybe um, some of these are, oh boy, it's a little bit lighter there. Some of these oranges, right, to, to bring back that kind of intensity. Now, and then possibly one or two places, right? So th this is this is the best part. This is the part that I took me the longest to learn when I was at the Repton Academy. The longest thing to learn was how do you paint backgrounds? Because painting a head, notice I've not touched the head yet. Like I'm not even there. Painting the head is a matter of uh, drawing technique more than anything else, right? It's not so much a matter of painting technique. Um, now, don't hold me to that. Of course, you have to paint the head. But the whole idea is how do you create a background um, that's creating enough atmosphere but also functioning on a compositional, on an abstract, uh, and on an atmospheric level, 
That's the real deal here, right? So obviously, you know, smoothing things out, maybe the background is a little bit softer in its edges, maybe the foreground is a little bit sharper in part, maybe we can merge a few of them. Is that too soft? Perhaps, but is that okay? For now, maybe. In general, classic rule, keep things soft until you uh, really need that sharpness later. So, but now we've lost some of those darker accents, right? We've lost that, and I'm going to begin to reintroduce some of that into the hair, right? To kind of pull the hair out from the background, right? So once again, not yet on the face, right? What I do also want is to avoid what I saw here. And what I saw here was that those uh, braids were just a little too... Uh, parallel and almost perfectly, like almost tubular and as, as straight as can be. We don't need that, right? So obviously, and in real life, I have my doubts that that's how they work. Maybe there's a little bit of a turn, right? Maybe there's a twist. Maybe they're laying on the form in a way that's more interesting. Maybe they're, they start off wider and then taper and get smaller as you go down, right? There's a lot of options here. There's a lot of things that you can do. Um, now we can zoom in and get a little bit of softness on one side of that edge into the hair, right? And then on the other side, we can get that softness from the from the hair um, between the, the forehead and the hair, right? So it's that edge quality on one side of the form, edge quality on, edge quality on the other, one side, then the other. So keep that in mind. And then we can get some more softness between the background here and foreground. And once again, using the background to carve some of the foreground. Okay? So already, I think in some ways, I'm establishing a focal point. Now, is this completed? Is this, that's, is this the end? No, of course not. This isn't. This isn't a long, long enough of a critique for this. But, but as you can see, what we have right now is enough of a, enough of a, a focus on the head. Now, let's get to the head itself. First and foremost, highlights, right? In general, the complexion of this person's skin it's probably a darker value, right? And, and I do have my doubts, especially considering some of the initial colors that you had in the background and that I sort of elaborated on. I really doubt that some of the colors in the head are going to be as neutral as this, right? So I feel like you're, you're pushing chroma in places, right? Right there, right there, happening. But then in the lights, for some reason, it's not there. So... Why not try it? Right? Why not try to get that in there? Right? It looks crazy at first. Indeed it is. But then, some violets in there, highlights. Right? Even doing something like that. And then reconsidering the local color. Right? The local color. In a way, is a strange concept, right? Because it's sort of the color um, of the object, like of, in as we disregard the um, as we disregard the light that's hitting it, right? So, which is of course impossible because that is uh, those two things are inseparable. So, right, and then an important bit here would be to just consider the quality of the highlight. Based on the form, where is that edge of the highlight going to be softer, showing a more rounded change of plane, and where is it going to be harder, as in on the zygomatic, showing a more angular change in plane.
Now, of course, I'm losing in um, in re in reworking this on an iPad. I'm losing some of the uh, sort of spontaneity of pl- of placement of uh, of the medium, right? Of the pigment, of the actual like quality of the color. Um, and as it's re- represented in paint itself, because this is flat, and you can already, you can even like, even just in the photograph, you can see the texture of the canvas, the texture of the paint, all that is, you know, an enormous uh, kind of advantage of traditional media, right? The, te- the fact that it's all tangible. Um, and now I'm going to just push these shadows, because I'm sure our light's coming from this side, or at least I've decided this at this moment, right? And I'm just going to knock that back. So now we have a much stronger pattern of of shadow shapes, right? Of the shadow. Oh boy, that's just almost dark. But that's okay. I'm okay with that. My, and I'm actually a little bit more okay with losing chroma in the shadows at this point, even though that green is wonderful and I could reintroduce it into some of this. And then really get some soft edges up here. And this, by the way, is pretty much how I critique in person, right? In my in my, my classes, I just make corrections, draw over students' paintings. Now, I might have lost some of the likeness. It's true, um, especially because I'm just sort of, uh, in some ways, inventing it as I go because I don't see the the model or the reference of the model or any of that, but I am ju- just trying to make something look more uh, convincing on paper or you know on the screen, right? That's the goal, right? Accuracy, in some ways, is rather relative. The, what, what's more important is the effect. So do bear with me if I have forgotten, if I have like lost some of the likeness. That's obviously something to keep in mind and uh, to work with as you go. Now I'm going to reintroduce that to slightly more neutral highlight. And really figure out the side plane of the nose, even on the lighter side. That's too bright. I like to work with, I don't like to work with the, the, uh, what is it called? The old, like, the disc view, though at times it can be faster if you're doing, if you're just working with both hands. The classic view easily can break things up into hue, chroma, and value. So you're already thinking in the proper terminology and conception of color that you should be. It's all there for you. Maybe that's a darker value. Maybe there's a dark value beaten down in the hair against the neck to show where the neck is. And of course, so, you know, and of course there's a, a place to go, especially when you try to find maybe some of the darker, darker values inside those shadows that will, will define that form. So the eyes themselves, a similar thing. I don't want to redo too much here. But I'm certain that you can push some of the values in there to really make those eye sockets be as uh, as deep as I wanted to say as can be, but it's not as can be, right? It's as they are in life in this this man this this model. All right. Okay. So now, am I 100% sure of what's going on in the background, and am I happy with it? I don't know. I don't know if I'm really happy with it. All did. Uh, I did all that in one layer, by the way. I don't really play around too much with all that. Um, only when I'm sort of working on, working on, working on working out paintings, if you will. Right. So this gives us a little bit more of that textural application. And I'm going to try to redo the background again, right? This is the part that's fun, right? You, then you go back to reworking the background. Um, maybe 
this blue can come back in, but 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 now it's placed on top in a way. Hmm, more chroma there, I think. Good, fantastic. Uh, in a way that's not uh, that doesn't look as though that looks as though the background is is a fundamental and inseparable part from the foreground itself. But okay. I'm actually quite happy with how this turned out, and I think to do this in life on top of the of the original uh, would not be hard. And I'm not saying as many changes need to be made. Uh, a part of it, it looks as though many changes are made because of the particular way I'm correcting this on Procreate. However, um, it's just a matter of unification. It's a matter of uh, finding the relative importance in terms of edge, in terms of contrast, and especially in terms of this dynamic of sort of the chromatic qualities of the colors between the background, the foreground, and so on. Okay? So thank you. Thank you to Kenneth for uh, allowing me to do, uh, to do a little bit of a critique on this. And uh, great job and good luck. Moving on to the next portrait submitted by uh, M. Juan Pablo 18. Um, I was quite excited to, to see this because I think this is an interesting co composition. Um, if I'm not mistaken, it was called The Guardian's Project, and I imagine the cats are what's, are the guardians here. Uh, and I like a lot of what I'm seeing here. I like the chroma in the face. I like the... I definitely like the way the hand is painted and modeled. I like the particular relationship of the, the white background with those hints of purple uh, and the almost pitch black of the hair and the, uh, the clothing and all that stuff. So what would I recommend in this case? First of all, in terms of modeling on the head, a Similar thing as before, I would like highlights here. Oh, that's a bit too big, maybe. Highlights, right? The highlights, a little bit on the lip, on, on the nose, all that's good. But look at how strong and how powerful some of these highlights on the arm, on the hand, look. And a similar thing can happen here. Possibly they're more chromatic, right? Possibly they're more, um, a little higher value. The more chromatic, they maybe are the opposite. Maybe they're actually a cooler color. Uh, maybe they're a cooler color. Maybe they're almost a gray. Lighter value, though. Right? To kind of complement the warms of the, of the skin here. Keep in mind, what's very important here, is that um, in placing this highlight, let me just do this, add, add a layer there. In placing the highlight, uh, whatever, you are placing it along the major change in plane, right? So I would go those, that's in, like a, in a very simplified manner, that's the front plane of the head, right? So, and of course, that's sort of the front plane of the upper part of the orbicularis. Oris, orbicularis, oris, right, the round muscle of the mouth. So, essentially, if these are the changes in plane, with this sort of being an intermediary plane, intermediary plane, intermediary plane, intermediary plane, side plane there, side plane there, what do we do with the actual values? This is our front plane, right? Clearly, everything is lit from the front, based on the highlight. So we can easily push that front plane of the frontal bone like this, right? We can take this side plane, or rather intermediate plane, and maybe push that. Um, maybe a little bit darker than that. I'll go for. I'm, I'm sort of just color picking. Now, oh my goodness, wrong one. Right? I'm gonna. Let's see if this works, right? I'm keeping my structural thing. And what if I remove that, right? So, right, it looks a little a little bit wonky, but somehow I personally think uh, that it's already on the way 
to describing the structure of the face a little bit more. My concern for this, and this could be just an image, right? Obviously, color is the most difficult thing to work with when uh, you can't see the original. Um, the most difficult thing to work with is that the chroma can be lost, and, and it could be lost in certain in certain pigments, certain like properties of how it's reflected, the light in the room. There's so many things that are just you know hard to control for. But I do think some of these value, at least from what I'm seeing now, some of these colors in the already darker half tone to shadow area probably could have a little bit more umph, right? a little more chroma compared to the already existing really kind of awesome chroma to the face. Um, and now, in, in the face in general, right? And now I'm just going to go and push this a little bit. So hopefully I didn't lose the likeness that much, but I think maybe just a little bit lighter for some of the brightest highlights, maybe brighter than that. Oh, that's ooh, very bright. But if we're going with that on the nose, why not? Let's try it. Maybe it's an effect that's maybe a little bit too much. Um, right, and then maybe saw, oh my goodness, and then maybe softening, sorry, 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 I get carried away, softening, I do this in class, by the way, so um, I make, uh, my students will attest to this, I make crazy marks on their canvases that I, um, you know, totally I mess things up for them, and then I have to go and work extra hard to fix it and prove that what I'm telling them actually is uh, is worthwhile. So, the neck, right? The neck now. Edges, way too sharp here. Way too sharp, way too sharp. I'm just going to soften those. Already, huge difference. And then, do something like a glaze, and uh, by that, I just mean sort of a layer that's somewhat transparent, uh, obviously in a very sort of procreate kind of way, uh, that sort of softens edges and also darkens the value of the neck as in relation to the values on the face. Now, I also, it looks as though just what I did kind of helped brighten up the face a little bit, making it the accent um, as opposed to like kind of overpowering the um, the arm. Now, before they were a little even, but, but now your main accent's the face, then you move to the hand. Now, this hand I mentioned before, right? I was, I'm, I'm a fan of it. Um, I will keep it as is. Some of those greens in there are nice and actually would probably, be some of these, kind of these are greens, wonderful. I've reintroduced them into the face. Now, the cats. Um, I think in general, they're okay. They're okay. I do tend to, oh my goodness, I'm trying to zoom in there. I, I do think that some of these reflected, reflected lights are too much. So just knocking them back. I think kind of situates that cat in the environment and really creates a shadow. Um, cats, my animal anatomy is not expert, um, but they also have scapulas. Have they have they have a spine? Um, there is also a a pelvis, and I think to some degree, from the back, no matter how fluffy this cat might be, that needs to be hinted at. I also don't think, compositionally, that everything is is in the right spot. And by that I mean from hand to hand you have this line that moves across, right? Let me make it white. Hand to hand you have this line that moves across, it passes into here. There's um, so one important element, second important element, third important element are on this this one line. This line, a similar thing, both paws are on this, the cat is on this. Then you have this diamond which is it's clearly it's reinforcing this cat is the sort of the axis around which everything rotates. That's there. Then you have the, this uh, more more orangey cat on the left, and that to me is uh, the anomaly, because I think um, what would solve this 
is to kind of keep the symmetrical quality of the painting, but it's, of course, it's a more dynamic symmetrical quality. And by that, uh, I primarily mean that in general, there's symmetry, but when getting to specifics, they're placed in different areas. So I would actually say a third cat, possibly up here, interrupting this line, interrupting this line that is from the from the coat to the backdrop uh, would be quite good. So in a sense, let me go back a little bit. Um, uh, so in a sense, this is obviously not the same kind of cat, right? So what if we do this? What if we copy and paste? What if we take that? What if we move this here? Um, what if we flip horizontal? Okay, interesting. What if we go in and just remove some of this real quick? The advantage of Procreate, guys. Um, right, um, this is now gone. Fantastic. Let's see how that looks. Uh, don't think that cat, the color of this cat is good. Color balance, uh, whatever. I'm just moving things around. What is going on? Okay, good. Uh, select, uh, I don't know, curves, maybe a darker cat, red, whatever, uh, as in green, this would be too much, too red, things down, to... this is insane, this is getting a little out of control, but let's say it's a darker value, obviously not this cat, it, has, it needs a different tilt, it needs something else, but there's a symmetrical quality. There's a now another axis, right? Another line that's going that's going through here, that's going through here. Um, and now we kind of have something that I think this piece was trying to have at the beginning, right? These intersections, these sort of, this very sort of triangular diamond uh, movement of lines, right? That is what I would, uh, that's what I, I recommend here. That that's the kind of, um, obviously there's probably more of this cat. Um, that's the kind of, could, could be even a black cat. Wouldn't that be awesome? What if the cat was also black, right? And this is why working on compositions is the most fun thing in the world. What if this cat was a much darker color, right? What if it was black? So that you almost couldn't see it here, right? So that you kind of keep what you had, maybe, you can only see its eyes. Maybe you can only see its eyes up there. Maybe a hint of light on a paw. Right? Just another bit of that. And in general, maybe some more connection. You already have a ton of it, but more connection with the background, more connection, like more of these things being eaten up by the environment. Right? Even just softening this, just in a crude way like that, already focus your attention on the head and allows this all to read a little bit more a little bit more um, as a whole, right? As a whole, as sort of, I think, it, I think it speaks to your idea, is what I'm saying. I would, though, maybe explore having one or two highlights on the clothing in this area and where you have the elbow, the inner elbow, right? To kind of get give us an idea of how long this arm is, you know, how long the upper arm, how long the forearm is, um, and just placing the elbow will be enough for that. And of course, to just get a little bit more specific here, probably have to carve the hand a little bit more so it's just a tiny bit more anatomy when it comes to the placement of, uh, especially, uh, yeah, this would not kind of go in that direction. Probably a little bit straighter than that. But yes, this hand of all, of all things probably needs the most, the, the most work. I also here would probably carve this in more, but I think that's a just as a shape and having and having a point there is just having a point right here. Oh my goodness, having a point right here is uh, and right there is just a little bit more uh, interesting, it's a little bit more intriguing. Okay, so that's my critique here. Um, I think this is a great piece, and I think it has potential to be a really good, good, 
a good concept for multiple pieces. You know, and by that I also mean it, there's a lot that, like, with the particular background, with the animals, with the colors that you're picking, there's a lot that allows you to really push the pictorial aspects of what you're going for. Okay, like really work on modeling the faces, really work on really figuring out the blacks, because you know, painting the blacks, the, like the color, especially of cloth of hair, like the, like the dark dark colors is the real challenge. It's the real sort of thing that the great masters really knew how to do, especially in Holland, um, especially in Flanders. Uh, all those, those were, were painters who knew how to really extract the most out of uh, a very, very small amount of color, and especially the darker ones. So a lot of this, there's a lot available here. A lot, a lot of it over here for you to do what you can. Now, obviously, my suggestion to add a cat is just sort of um, a way to kind of guide your eye upwards to add another element um, to think about it. Maybe that, maybe you do need that line now that I look about it. Maybe the black cat needs to come down a little bit. Uh, maybe you can only see its eyes coming from the black uh, of the of the coat, right? Maybe, maybe you. Don't notice it at first. It doesn't need to interrupt it, right? So I'm just going to change this now, right? So this is where composition, and this is where Procreate is the best, right? Because you can make these changes. Maybe that was actually a great idea to kind of have this as um, a shape in the corner. But maybe also you need those two eyes. Let's say it's, right? You need, these, you need these two eyes coming out from the darkness there. That's almost like something you don't notice at first as a viewer, but then when you do, really adds another layer of interest and excitement to the piece. Okay? So awesome. Thank you, M. Juan Pablo, 18. Uh, thank you for this upload. This was a real honor and uh, a pleasure to critique. So this is the piece that I'm going to critique, uploaded by Maximilian Roth, um, that I... Uh, that really appealed to me straight off the bat, right? Mainly because of these very particular technical qualities that remind me so much of my own education, right? This sort of strong terminator line, right? That line between the, whoops, it is, that line between the light and, and the shadow of the core form, right? Between um, the sharp edges of the cast shadow that they fall onto other forms and describe them, the, um, kind of minimization of the what is just the general area of shadow, keeping it simpler, keeping it flatter. All this is looking quite good and really speaks to me. It's really sort of uh, dear to my own heart coming from the Academy of Fine Arts in St. Petersburg. Uh, there's definitely a quality here. Now, at the same time, I don't want to be presumptuous. This could be a little bit more of an atelier approach, right? It could be something a little bit more um, observational than structural uh, um, in approach, even though there may be some stylistic things in the end are preserved as they are. So th that's uh, all all possible. Uh, but at the same time, something like this ear could easily can easily be a rep and academy kind of an ear. Um, it could also be a, a Grand Central Academy kind of an ear. I've seen that there too. So. And I think all that's quite good, right? It's very good that there's this interest, like there's a crossover now, more and more, especially with the internet and uh, just more people being trained in this way. I think it's quite good that um, these techniques are uh, are finding, are finding, you, that you can find these techniques uh, in, all this, in all kinds of different places. So the first thing I want to do though, in the critique, is take care of one thing, which is really uh, sort of the biggest issue here. I'm going to add a separate layer because I need this to be clarified. Compositionally, what's going on here is sort of a problem, mainly because the width of that arm is equivalent to the width of that arm. They're completely parallel. Um, I don't see the, the beginning of the arm, so I don't see sort of the muscles of the shoulder girl, like I do here, they need to also be there, so that at least we have an idea of where, you know, in some sense where the armpit is, um, in order to then see how long the forearm, uh, the upper arm is, and then, of course, go from there, right? So there's a lot of compositional stuff that's off. Now, um, and by compositional, I, of course, also mean 
anatomical, right? Because I don't think those two are separable. So what I would do here is, to the, my first correction would be something like this. I would bring this up, and I would move this whole arm up. I think that would create the plane of the ground a little bit more. I would also maybe extend it out, so that now that's the axis here. That one's going there. This one's going maybe somewhat straighter. We can move that. And possibly somewhere in here, a little gap opens up, right? A little gap opens up uh, of the background. Compositionally, more intriguing. However, there are other things to do. And one of those is getting rid of it entirely. And by that, I don't mean totally getting rid of the arm, though that is not, that is, I wouldn't say not an option, but kind of working the same way that you were working up here, right? Where there's a total minimization of contrast as this area kind of loses importance and, and kind of blends into the background, right? There's, um, so I think a similar thing could be done with this arm, uh, especially because tonally, these values on the, on the elbow up close are very similar to those cast shadows on the far arm. And if we're going for this atmospheric perspective, then we have to go all the way, I think. So just knocking it back, just a little bit at least, might be a solution. Um, but another solution I want to try is to get rid of it entirely. Um, and that already makes me feel a lot bit better about this piece. I believe it now, right? But that's, the, that's the thing. Now, where could this arm be? Now, this pose now would not be able to be held, but maybe this arm, maybe something is happening where it's wrapped around um the rib cage right maybe something like i don't know maybe it's maybe there's like this effect of uh this person being wounded right i don't know if you're kind of thinking a little bit more uh, in a narrative way right so that arm could grab could grab the wound right something i'm not saying that's an ideal compositional solution but it's something that kind of prevents that crazy right angle this kind of repetitive um Get lots and lots of repetition that was there. That's something to think about. Um, that's something to think about. So these are just sort of general proportional corrections. And now, of course, that's mainly where a lot of these things come from. The next thing is um, I'm also going to talk about anatomy um, and so certain value distribution. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back. I'm going to close this. I'm going to go back here. I'm going to do what we just did, removing that arm. Okay, but now just a little more carefully. Right, so that that was me explaining it. Now I am just removing it. I'm not going to add the other one. I don't think this is necessarily the place for it, but that is just a way to think, right? In a sense, I know that a model might look a certain way, right? Because that's the pose. Um, it might be a photograph. It might be God knows what, right? It's 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 it could be anything. But what we need is something that looks effective, convincing on paper, on canvas. That's the goal. We can do that, then we uh, have essentially that's the, that's what we're after all the time. So I remove that arm. Now, am I really do I look? Does it look as though she doesn't have another arm? A little bit, a little bit. So this is sort of the tough part. We could add that other arm somewhere else, even right. We can we can just hint at it in just the slightest bit of you know just the darkest. Take the darkest thing, make it as light as. Possible through, oh my god, see? Procreate and graphite don't get along so well. Right? So you can kind of hint. Maybe that arm is going the other way, right? If we zoom out, maybe it's going out here. That could be a solution that's maybe a little bit easier to do, easier to establish. Maybe it's further back. Maybe the, uh, the forearm is going away from us. This is all here then we can fit in the hand. Stuff like that, right? So I'm gonna leave that for now. We're not gonna worry about that too much. I'm just going to uh, maybe even lighten that up a little bit and see where that goes. So let's keep it because that's a, a possible solution. We would move stuff all the time. And if you've watched my course on the Master's Academy, you know that uh, if something is wrong at any point, I might've been working on it for 15 hours. I see something is wrong, it's erased, 
and we start all over, right? Because the most important thing is how do we get ourselves to see those mistakes and to correct them when necessary. So the next thing, the hair. I'm going to lighten it up a little bit because clearly, based on just contrasts, it looks like the most important thing here. As um, a shape that Locke is, is uh, taking a lot of attention onto itself, um, I actually think that the face itself might not be that important, and the Terminator itself is enough. Right? That's um, that's a little bit closer to the values that are everywhere else, right? So in general, we're doing we're doing good there. Now I do like that ear, and I am focusing on it. And now we can begin with a major kind of tonal restoration of the face, right? Softer, simpler, just dark enough, but if the face is doing that, where else can we find our main accents? The breast here, up close. Cast shadow, form shadow. Let's get that to be a much more prominent, prominent dark value, especially because the, the value on that side of the form um, is as light now as it is in relation to this, to, to this dark. Remember, the farther something is, the lighter it gets. Or, to be more precise, the farther something is, the, the, the more reduced the contrast. So now, nice. But now it's true that this side, this twist, now the pelvis is closer here. So we can kind of guide this darker value just a little bit towards everything down there. Right? Just a little bit. Cast shadow onto that leg. And then we're set, possibly pushing this a little bit into the leg right here. Cast shadow, and I'm just going to darken these half tones right there. Right. So of course I do want them softer. So I'm just going to go in and get them a little bit softer um, where I can. Now, this already, even just darkening where things need to be, the darker value is enough to make um, a difference. Right. We don't have enough time here to really get into certain types of modeling but um of like anatomical forms but uh there are some corrections that i have so here i feel this leg is just too it's not still just not long enough it's too short so i'm just going to move this out it's keeping the, the shape as you have it i think the knee is relatively well well defined the kneecap the plane changes everything will, will be kept as is but the knee is also fundamental to the structure super important thing so we can bring that all up Bring this light into here, right? Just kind of elongating the upper leg. And of course, obviously, if you do that, you also end up elongating the lower leg. Uh, let's get that all in there. Okay, so already that's getting there. But in all honesty, now that I see now that I see it, I would actually probably go just that bit longer, right? just a little bit, um, maybe even longer than that. I wouldn't over curve this line at the bottom. I would make the cast shadow more prominent and just a darker value. And I definitely pay attention to these areas, right? Like these areas of light, uh, because they are small, surrounded by shadows, and because of that, appear lighter than they actually are. It happens all the time. I would also slightly subdue the abdomen, right? Just kind of get that out of place. Now, I do think we need to figure out how do we modify some of these lines. Oh my goodness, there we go. And make sure we have lines where we really need them, right? Where we really need them. So personally, it's not just what's further back and what's, you know, what's closer, but also what's of fundamental importance. So in a sense, this line right here for me, and this is also in part a stylistic thing, would have to be, hmm, hold on a second, just switch pencils here, I don't like that, I don't like how that's looking. Um, how's this HB pencil? Good. Um, this line, with all of its overlaps, right, that would be combination, right, that would be the terrace major and latissimus, right, all this is here, the serratus, and then the rib cage itself. And I want to see the rib cage all the way to where it truly ends. 
Now, I think the body's a little over-twisted here. Right? Things are a little bit you know, snapped. But, you know, you can say Michelangelo did a bunch of that too, and that's okay. Right? It works for him. I mean, it sure did work for him. And then, right, don't hesitate. That back line is defining very important aspects of the form. Super important. Some of these overlaps in the armpit, also very important. And the darker you go, the more you have to go into some of those half tones to model what's really going on there. Now, this right here, right, these are the heads. These are the heads of the uh, of the triceps. This would be the uh, the lateral head, and this would be the long head, uh, kind of inserting into that common tendon. I think it'd be nice to actually have a little bit more of that common tendon, uh, you know, a little, a little more prominent. And I'm gonna push, push the, push the, the actual like expansion of the heads of the tricep a little bit more, right? Kind of emphasize the the uh, the way to insert into. Uh, into into the tricep tendon. Keep in mind the lateral head has has um, a tail, right? And it would go along along the tricep tendon there. All inserting into the olecranon process. That is a fundamental anatomical landmark, and I would make that the darkest thing. That's the closest, right? That's what we need. And look how and look how far back the head looks compared to that. Look how far back the torso on the far side looks. But then immediately we jump to the ear. We jump to we jump to the rib cage where we can, right? And then we, we go down to here, to to the leg, and we're brought back again, right? Just allow those accents to guide the eye. It's not just the lines that you see in a sense. It's also the lines that you don't see. But you only see, let's say, the stops along the way. That's just as important. Um, so yeah, so that's what I would do. Go with it. And of course, now this idea, sort of very kind of from my standpoint, a, a rep and academy kind of concept, right? Of let's kind of don't overdo the shadows, leave them simple, leave them flat, is of course very important. But I do have to say, can be taken a little too far. Right? Um, I do think some of this has just become outline and a flat, a flat color. I think enough has to happen along the, along the edge, along the contour. Enough has to happen in terms of overlap, in terms of maybe some darker values, um, to give you a hint, right, of the forms there. Is that the rib cage? Is that the breast? Is that the, uh, the iliac crest? Right? Like what is happening? within a generally flat area of tone, okay? So I think I think we covered some important things here. Um, just in terms of this hand, I would, you know, maybe play around with it, invent it, maybe one or two of these go, maybe the pinky kind of curls under the rest, kind of continue, but really show their overlap. It's minor, but it makes a difference so that the hand doesn't look like, you know, a glove or a glove or or a mitten, you know. So stuff like that is important um, to keep in mind as well. I like certain aspects of the the forearm here. I do like them a lot. Um, I think now that the leg is longer, modeling it will actually make more sense. It'll be easier because you see the muscles of the thigh, um, and very importantly. Um, up here, your main your main area of light, like the, the ear, of course, is modeled because you have all those cast shadows and these little small like things. You can copy a shadow shape and it'll look very effective. But where your knowledge of what's going on really has to has to uh, appear, has to be used uh, to create the most effective uh, piece of uh, artwork possible is in something like the lighter values of an important anatomical area, okay? So, uh, much, I'm, you know, an honor, an honor to critique, to thank you again for up uh, uploading this, 
that this wonderful piece was uploaded by Maximilian Maximilian Roth, and uh, I wish I wish I wish him I wish you Maximilian the best of luck. I'm uh, I think there's that there's really a lot of great qualities here, so keep it up. So this is the final piece I'm going to critique today, submitted by the great by the great Craig Mullins. It's you know it's truly truly an honor to critique this, um, and you know it's kind of a it's it's not it's not an easy an easy task, but since since it was uploaded, that's what we're going to do. So I particularly you know. There are marvelous things here, right? The remarkable use of texture, the incredible um, sort of cool color palette in some of these areas. Let, let me switch some things on some of the darker values. Cool color palette right there. Um, you really sense the you know, feeling of light coming in from the outside, reminding me of Alma Tadema, um, you know, artists of the of that era, maybe a little bit of a, of John Singer Sargent uh, in terms of the cloth, uh, in terms of the type. Of, of costume, things like that, right? But um, compositionally, and mainly I'll be talking about the composition here, uh, is where I would, I, would, I would spend some time sort of asking some questions, thinking about uh, what's, what's happening here. Now, without even worrying too much about uh, the narrative, right? There's this... Uh, You could uh, you can avoid it entirely and still think about how to uh, to arrange and organize the composition. So I start with that. My first sort of the most the most interesting aspect of this and the most the thing I kind of my eye hooks onto right away is these patterns and shapes of this like this transparent cloth hanging here, right? Clear, uh, really almost horizontal diagonal. Inter inter interrupted by a bunch of verticals also tilting a little bit a vertical right there this is really guiding your eye to places and then of course this elongated compositional um like the the the, the format the long format is this very dynamic you could see this long let's switch to red you can see this long sweep of the diagonal um and then, of course, you can see the long sweep of the horizontal. And you can see it pass through here. You can see it pass through all these different parts. This area, you can see it pass to the slab that he's lying on. You can see it pass to this table. Um, and therein lie a few problems. Here are some things, right? From my education, from my approach to this, um, I have, uh, and like the way we were taught to compose and the way that I, I tend to is to have as much variation as possible, um, and only have repetitive elements, angles, uh, like a little continuous lines when absolutely necessary and at no other time. So what can we do here to, um, what can we do here to, kind of liven this up a tiny bit, right? Liven this up, create enough uh, of a dynamic compositional structure to uh, emphasize certain things that I'm seeing here. So I'm going to remove everything that I did, uh, and let's see what we can do. So, okay, my main, the main thought, right, is the horizontality of this character right here, right? That's clearly the main idea. I have a few qualms with, uh, I don't want to call them qualms, it's sort of unfair, right? It's, I mean, for, but I do have some, um, some, some concern, rather, with how far apart everything is from the edges, right? Composition is not about what's inside, the composition is about what's outside, right? How everything is encased in a frame. So that's where I begin. Um, the, this is almost the same as this. Um, and if it isn't, this darker part is a little bit longer, then the table here is very similar to the distance between the edge and the table right there. 
Now, this distance seems to be super important because it falls onto this other vertically standing character. Um, now, but at the same time, um, there's another vertically standing character standing in a very similar pose, also upright. The distance between them equal to how wide they are, and then how wide the distance behind there is, and then how wide the column is, and then how wide that space is, and then how wide the column behind them is. I can keep going. Every, they, that's pretty much the same distance. This is pretty much the same distance, and so on. Right? So not, not a big deal, really. It can be easily corrected by just moving certain things left and right. But I'm just pointing out where these repetitions exist and how and what we can do with them later. So now the next thing, bringing this up a little bit later, is this space right here, the darkness. Uh, the darkness right there, and then once again, the space of this darker area to that edge is equal to the space from that edge to this vertically standing uh, person. Also of fundamental importance, um, because now, I mean, it's not exactly equal, but it's very close. So she begins to play such an important role. And yet, she's clearly um, creating a certain tangent um, with the, 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 our main character uh, in a way that is a little bit disruptive. So in a sense... Uh, what I would say is there's almost her importance is sort of is, is, is sort of drastically overstated with all of the like the, the distances that repeat themselves and lead to her. And at the same time, I don't think thematically and definitely chromatically she's as important as the character next to her. So especially because uh, actually, especially because of the turn of the head, the gaze, the color, the like the, the the warm color there. So, the question is, do we even need her uh, on the right? Right? Is she necessary there? Okay. So here, the, those are just some some concerns. The other thing, of course, is now height wise, the space above him is the same as the space below him, pretty much. Um, so he's perfectly, with white though, he's perfectly in the middle of the, um, almost perfectly in the middle of the page. And then to state the, this uh, horizontality, there's a line that's practically going all the way from one side to the other, which is more or less cutting everything in half. Now, these are all compositional concerns of mine, right? This is, has nothing to do, as I said before, a great admirer of, of the work, a great admirer of the painterly qualities, of the imagination, all this 100%. Like, there's no, there's, there's no doubt. But from a standpoint of composing paintings that, that can stand alone, and this is the real, real distinction here, can this painting stand alone? Um... Can it like guide the eye properly into what's happening, and can everything that's happening be of uh, an, of narrative importance? Okay, and this of course is uh, not just a content question; it is a uh, it is also a question of um, of just of of abstract of an abstract compositional nature. So okay, so I'm just going to remove all this. I didn't do it on a separate layer because I am in fact I, I, I am a, not a digital painter in fact and I uh, do forget to do that those kinds of things but uh, that's all fine this is all recorded so that's all good and let's see what we can do so now that that's that's the case right now that we see some of these uh, repetitive repetitive things going on my mo the most interesting thing that I see um, that's happening here, and that sort of I think the main idea is this constant. Uh, I will actually add this: is this constant move of like, right? Every there are there's like a system of 
lines that are as as like these verticals that run across and these horizontals or very slight diagonals um, that are also kind of moving across. So it's creating this sort of this sort of very uh, geometric, very right angled pattern. Um, I think it's very important, right? Because our main goal here, um, if I would like, right, this, the whole idea of the critique is in the sense I take over the piece a little bit. So how I would go about this, the main goal is to accent the sort of the, the piece, right? The piece of sleep or possibly, you know, he's, he's not alive. So to get this to work, um, I would say you, there are two options. Either almost everything has to be this con this constant horizontal action. Like it has to be enhanced even more than is happening here, right? The, the, the horizontality needs to be pushed uh, to an extreme. So let's see if we can do that a little bit and see how that goes. Um, and then we'll try it again. Uh, one second, let's see, duplicate and uh, close. So we'll have that layer to work with later. Um, so if we push the horizontality, uh, painting, let's see, or the brush, right? Then, lightwise, we can add little bits of lighter values where we can. This is maybe too light. I'm going to try that again. Um, lightwise. Yeah, there we go. Right, we can push the horizontality. It can become, it can be seen in slight, tiny bits of light, right? Everything is taking you across. This whole area, right? This whole area of the darkness on the left-hand side is so interesting because of, you know, the, because of the, the helmets and uh, all the armor and all this, like, that I feel it needs to be actively part of the compos of the composition as a whole a little bit more right so a little bit more of all that right kind of oh and already i'm seeing a little bit of a move across that's highlighting that uh horizontality and then she stands here as a, a vertical accent to contradict the horizontality but also emphasizes, right? Every, every, every uh, opposite, uh, every complement, right? The whole idea of complements is that they, uh, complements are opposites, but they work together, right? They work against one, one another, enhance one another. Now, the interesting thing about what I'm seeing here, so this is the, sort of the hard part, is what if we take this character here? I'm sorry, I'll just, I'll get rid of her. And what if we um, move her? I'm going to remove that. And what if we just get rid of her? Hmm. Oh, yes. Sorry, sorry. What if we get rid of her? What if she's not necessary? This is just an attempt, right? What if, like at times, you know, some of this might be. What if that's how it is, right? Now, I actually think there's a solitude here, right? There's like a, there's like a quiet. There is, um, I don't think, maybe thematically, there needed to be two characters. Maybe in the narrative there were. But from, an, from a standpoint of uh, the most expressive narrative that can happen here, I think th th this is what is happening. Now, w what if we take this person who I sort of feel is super important and what if we uh, you know what if we tone her down just a little bit kind of getting a little more emphasis emphasis there good and then moving um, getting some lighter values uh, let's see getting some lighter values on the out on the outside there Right? So that she stands out in that way. 
I still think that's not enough, right? And that's sort of the weird part. It's not enough. And, I, and possibly, what if a way to solve this is to take the dark corner here um, and bring it up just a little bit, right? So now I'm just moving our darkest contrasts closer to our main actors. Now, what I do like, though, is that we can still push some of the darks back into everything here, right? So, and of course, this part I was waiting to get to, kind of one of my, my most interesting, the, the thing I find most interesting about this piece, the real intrigue here is the, is the character there. Is that a guard, you know, who's looking out for, for him? You know, all that stuff is interesting. But I'm not sure. I think maybe the guard or whoever is too obscured. Maybe that helmet, as cool as it is, right? And this is the problem, right? There's a lot of stuff here that's really interesting, that like just really captures your imagination with its intricacies and detail and all this stuff that um, that really makes this as masterful as it is. But um, I think the guard needs to be brought out a little bit more. And for that, we need to maybe remove some of these these tasty tasty parts like uh, you know this in really intricate helmet to make sure or just change the helmet right to make sure we get a little bit of light on on his face and he stands out as a dark edge against maybe the lighter window in general possibly even there's some kind of, I don't know what this is, but there's maybe a lighter, a lighter value right behind the head, right? So that a little bit more pulling us towards him. There's already this pull towards him, right? There's already this pull of accents that um, I, tended, I, I added there that kind of push that horizontal quality as well as move everything towards this edge, right? Keep in mind, something closer to the edge is, is capturing your attention. This is a classic example of... Uh, Right, your main accent closer to, like to the middle of the page of the format, and then some sort of other, some sort of like in our case, almost a tertiary accent, right? Because this would be number one, number two, and number three. The tertiary accent off on the side, uh, properly minimized, like is happening here, with you know more subdued values, so that it doesn't take all the attention away. But I think it maybe was minimized a little bit more. Than necessary. So I think that kind of establishes that horizontal quality a little bit more um, and and creates that sort of peace, the, the quiet, right? She's come in to look at him. Um, she maybe is even aware that there's a guard back there. Uh, where not? I'm imagining it's a guard, right? I'm inventing the narrative. But in a sense, who, everyone invents the narrative when they're looking at a PC. Maybe it's illustrating, starts illustrating something specific, but we can't always be uh, aware of that. We have to kind of go with the thing that um, that connects to a memory of ours, a book we read, a movie we watched, something like that, right? So um, now, of course, I would just think about cropping, right? So I'm just going to do this. Oh boy, that's intense. Um, what if none of this was necessary? I'm, I'm, I'm trying. I'm playing around with this, right? So that is just, it's cut. We still have the horizontality. We have moved the head closer to the middle of the page, which is, I think, interesting. Um, we still have the problem of them being equidistant. Um, and I don't know how necessarily to fix that at this point, right? Um, we can kind of elongate the other way, maybe. Maybe that could work. I'm just gonna give this a shot. Uh, uh, let's see. Canvas, crop and resize. Let's do like this, done. Um, Something like that. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm, this is just sort of a very, very crude correction. So bear with me. All right. So now compositionally, I just, you know, I blocked that in as fast as I could. Um, 
and there's stuff there, all that same stuff. Uh, but now uh, let's recrop. My goodness, there we go. Let's recrop and see what happens. Um, interesting. I'm I'm sort of intrigued. I like the space now. I like the amount of space we have between everyone. Though I'd probably crop and resize. Uh, cancel. Um, remove those lines first. Probably. Um, I still think the some of that's a little equidistant, but that's okay. Possibly the column here can move in, right? It can move closer to here with those nice cools on it. Everything can come down to there. Um, kind of tightening the composition a little bit more. And of course, some of the darker values down here could be uh, interesting, right? Could be, it's, it could be nice to have, and then to elongate some of the, the highlights. Um, and that side, once again, pushing out. And it sort of shifted everything. And it's made this about the darkness and this uh, kind of area that's really intriguing. Um, and yet, um, this whole darker area is in response to some sort of emotional interaction between two characters over here. My only concern here is that now things are a little equidistant as well, so we could probably move the wall closer and make move the sky in, right? All that stuff can come in a little bit. Maybe even some holes of light in the tree could kind of uh, create these little tiny bits and patterns of accents up there. Now, am I saying this is the only way? Nope. Am I saying this is the only, only way to make a change here? No. I think this is most definitely not the only way to make a change here. They're, they're, and you know that's the best part about how you're composing it because there is no real such, there's no, no such thing as a bad composition, right? The only bad composition is one that's not um, kind of allowing uh, the idea to come across, right? In a sense. So I am, I just essentially took over. Now, of course, I might. Th this is me kind of interpreting an idea and seeing what changes I could have here that would uh, help express what I see as the idea. Now, of course, um, the author of the book, the painter of the piece, you know, there's a lot of, uh, of room for the personal, right? The particular um, story they want to tell. I'm going to bring this down a little bit, actually. I, I'm going to bring this down, mainly because I uh, don't want it so, I mean, it's not going to, I'll try it. I don't know. It'll still be sort of cut in half, but um, I do think that we need to, probably to make this work, is to continue some of these lighter areas. Those cools are good, right? Continue some of those lights into here. Right, so possibly we can get, we can move. I mean, maybe there's a, another window somewhere or something, right? It, maybe it's blocked by a lot of things, but maybe it's enough, right? So there's stuff going on that will keep you from doing this. Now, from a tonal standpoint, I'm a little bit concerned with how light this is. I don't think it actually needs to be that light. And if this light is um, realistic, then it should still be a darker value than the sky. Now, is that the most effective thing? Absolutely not, right? Like possibly making it as light as possible could be the way to go, but um, also having that cloth hang a little bit could be quite effective. Um, once again, kind of kind of continuing the, the vertical aspect of that whole area with the character there. So yeah, so the, that's just a way to see what we can do here. Um, this is the previous composition. So the other thing I wanted to just briefly mention is how it's still cropped, but I kind of will keep it cropped. Um, we'll keep it cropped. Just remove this. Um, 
even to just that crop kind of solves some of those initial problems that I was talking about. We don't even have to get rid of her um, for that crop to, uh, uh, because that crop kind of achieves a lot of the movement that we needed. At the same time, getting rid of her, I think, gives you that bit of quiet, right? Because this, this, this piece, I think, needs that, that quiet, right? Like this, there's something, there's something uh, contemplative here. I think adding another person, kind of like adding another person to a room, right? Uh, always kills the contemplation, becomes more of a conversation. Unless that's what, that's what you want, right? Always keep that in mind. So, um, the, but, but the other thing that I want to talk about is that an emphasis on the verticals, right? On the verticals could achieve a similar thing in an other way, right? This could be a reflection. This could cut across. There's the tree here. You can really push that tree up, show the tree down here, show the reflection of the tree, uh, show reflections down there, right? This is just, once again, very, very crude. Reflections um, show uh, something, maybe a cloth or something is on the ground and it's also, right? It's gotten that, it's, it's just moving everything vertical. Um, a similar thing, we can lighten him up. Right, lighten him up, show more of the verticality, right? The more of the verticality that, you, that you're showing, the more emphasis you then would have to have on him, this dude lying down, because that would give you the complement of the horizontality, right? So either, so this is the part I was talking about, right? Either everything in a sense becomes horizontal, right? Or we're emphasizing the verticalness of everything, right? In this horizontal format. And then the only thing that really is horizontal, the only thing that's really imitating the format itself is our main accent. Okay? So, in a sense, there wasn't a lot of concreteness there, but those were just some ideas on the, uh, some variations on the theme of composition. This was an absolute honor um, to critique. Absolute honor. This is a this is uh, a marvelous a marvelous uh, a marvelous piece of work, and uh, I appreciate this immensely. Awesome. Okay, that was a lot of fun, and for me, an absolute honor and pleasure. Don't forget, you don't need to be a paid subscriber to upload your pieces for them to be critiqued by the New Masters Academy artists and instructors. But most importantly, stay healthy and safe, stay indoors, and hopefully we'll meet on the other side of this real soon.